सेवेंटीन कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ सी आई टी यू सेंटर ऑफ इंडियन ट्रेड यूनियन ए सेंट्रल ट्रेड यूनियन रिप्रेजेंटिंग मोर देन सिक्स मिलियन वर्कर्स इन इंडिया अक्रॉस द सेक्टर दैट कॉन्फ्रेंस इज नाउ टेकिंग प्लेस इन द सिटी ऑफ बेंगलुरु फ्रॉम एटीन जनवरी ऑनवर्ड एंड इट विल कंटिन्यू टिल ट्वेंटी सेकेंड जनवरी दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस इज द यूजल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ सी आई टू टू होल्ड द कॉन्फ्रेंस एवरी थ्री ईयर्स टू रिन्यू इट्स लीडरशिप एंड ऑल्सो टू रिव्यू इट्स एक्टिविटीज चैलेंजेस एंड देन डिसाइड्स रिओरियंट इट्स फ्यूचर कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन all these thing basic policy decision and organizational decision are taken from this conference that is usually the purpose of this conference around 1500 delegate across the sector from all the states across the sector both organized and unorganized sector are taking part in this conference Now the martyrs resolution paying homage to the martyrs this conference also pay him homage to all those who died of hunger in india and world over in this crisis ridden capitalist world i place this resolution for your approval 17th conference of ci2 is taking place now in a very all together in a new challenging situation not only before the working class but the entire country's common people concern we are in the face of a very barbary conflict by an anti people anti worker anti national destructive governance policy regime led by this bjp government with the active support of the entire corporate class and also the corporate control media they are utilizing their economy management is going to such a situation which set in motion a faster process of pauperization of the working people who are actually creating values creating wealth for the society and during the same time an obscene inequality in the wealth generation in favor of the handful of corporate classes generally all together it, it represents according to ci2 a total fraud and perversion on the economy process and that is the hallmark of the economy management in bjp's rule at the same time it has got its reflection in the political situation and the very crisis that is emanating out of this perverted economy management that is also getting reflected in the political governance reflecting in more undemocratic authoritarian onslaught on the democratic right right to dissent right to oppose and also the collective right of the people to collectively assert that is coming up one after another during the last four years since our 16 conference that period reflects that that period also reflects the grievous pandemic lockdown period which expose the how barbaric a corporate control government can become to even to make the sufferings of the people a means for vulgar wealth accumulation during the same period the period when country suffered a setback in negative gdp then the same year the india's corporate class has increased wealth more than 100% such savage barbarism is the reflection of the present so it is a very big challenge before the working class and in order to facilitate that process the government is going ahead in restructuring the employment relations making more fragile fragile the employment rights of the workers and on the other hand eliminating all right trade union rights by a in the process of notifying enacting the labor code by repealing 29 established labor laws 
and now the latest stage is now they are whatever law remains if corporate violates okay some penalty can be charged but that that violation will be is going to be decriminalized that will not attract criminal action as such the government is going ahead in legalizing the loot on the public wealth by way of very liberal rewriting of of corporate loans from the banks and at the same time through the ibc insolvency bankruptcy procedure to legalize the default and on the and forcing the banks to accept the sacrifice of their loan portfolios to the tune of 64 to 70 percent so yet in this whole perverse process and its economic political reflection another important aspect which the conference is dealing with is the during this situation the government as a part of its integral comprehensive project they are cultivating poisons in the society seeking to communally polarize people and bring about other forms formats of polarization in the name of caste creeds regionalism all kinds of to keep the people themselves busy in confronting each other and the major crime that is being committed on the economy and the society uh, will be will go out of their views this is the conspiracy and this conspiracy is the integral part of their economy management and political power so the trade union work here this conference wants to develop a comprehensive understanding on that direction and prepare the working class movement for a much more aggressive offensive combat that because that is the need of the hour if we want not only to save the workers right but also to save the country because this is as well a conspiracy against the country self reliance whatever the country has achieved in 75 years that's a conspiracy against it even ilo has been forced to say that the workers have to struggle for increase in their real wages because only increase in the real wages will help in growth of the economy in uh, increasing the jobs in uh, addressing the issue of unemployment and also by uh, growth by providing employment that the probability of recession and the depth of the recession also can come down so that is the solution to address this recession and the slow down of the growth that is what the ilo recommends but what are the countries in dif different capitalist countries doing the most of the countries in the capitalist world they are not addressing the concerns of the workers it is not the way that they are following to increase the wages or increase the condition improve the conditions of the workers in most of the capitalist countries what we see is that to address this more attacks are coming over the workers so this what we need to understand is that the uh, uh, situation where all over the world the workers wages are declining workers are coming into struggles and the employer the governments are not protecting the interests of the workers but they are trying to uh, further attack the living conditions of the workers for the benefit of the worker uh, employers this entire thing shows that the system itself is in crisis the entire capitalist system the neoliberal system is in crisis it is not able to provide any relief to the workers so what we understand for the present situation there are certain unique features on the one hand we see that the new norm today is for the workers to come out into larger and protracted struggles facing the repression by the uh, employers victimization and also by the governments and the state machinery like we are seeing in our own country how the inequalities are increasing despite 
the poor, the workers producing the wealth of this country. So let us, Oxfam report is there, the world inequality report is there, how the richest are cornering, even in our country the latest report says that 40% of the wealth is uh, in the hands of 1% of the population and the lower half of population has only 3% of uh, wealth. So that is how the inequalities are growing. Struggles are there increasingly, but at the same time, unless the struggles are led with a proper ideological political perspective for an alternative, for the system, the right wing is utilizing the same discontent among the people and it is trying to uh, project itself as anti-establishment and utilizing that anti-establishment sentiment of the people, it is coming to power and implementing the same policies. And because of this, the ruling classes, the capitalist class is supporting the right wing in many countries. Not only in our country, in many countries it is with the support of these ruling classes, the capitalist class, that the right wing is coming into power or gaining influence. So this is when we are struggling on the demands of the workers. The lessons we have to draw today is that we have also to struggle against the system, to struggle against the right wing ideology and for an alternative. Broadly we see the same situation in our country where the BJP led government is implementing neoliberal policies with more aggressiveness and also on the other hand trying to suppress the rights of the people using all the entire state machinery, the different laws, the CBI, etc., etc., and also through its divisive machinations by RSS. Today we have to be extra careful. We will be discussing communalism, the danger of communalism in a commission paper also. But at the same time, when we are fighting against the neoliberal policies, we have also have to create the danger of these communal divisive forces because the workers are also being influenced. More and more workers are being influenced by the uh, RSS and its ideology. Inklaab Zidabad! Comrade Pan Pisco Lal Salam! Inklaab Zidabad! Dear comrades, delegates, of the Situ 17th All India Conference on behalf of more than 105 million members of the World Federation of Trade Unions from 133 countries from all corners of the earth, I convey to you and through you to the workers of India militant class greetings. First of all, I would like to thank for the invitation and the possibility to attend the 17th National Conference of C2. WFTU called the trade unions all over the world to protect the autonomy of their class orientation away from bureaucracy, corruption and manipulation by the capital and employers. The weapon of the working class is solidarity and internationalism. For the workers who resist, who do not compromise with oppression, discrimination and exploitation, there is only one path of dignity, the path of the struggles.